like right in the middle of a neighborhood there's these crazy dunes like that's a full neighborhood over there and we just have these really cool dunes over here so we're gonna film a little video here today <laughs> you about five mistakes that I see a lot of beginner filmmakers making and it's not like typical things I put a lot of effort into coming up with tips that I'm hoping you guys have never heard before there's some really useful and juicy ones and like I said hopefully you've never heard any of them so we're gonna cruise around these dunes we got Watson the dog causing chaos and we're gonna give you guys these tips okay today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks and we're gonna be talking about them a little bit more later on in this video <laughs> the first thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about is probably one of my favorite filmmaking guidelines and sort of things to help you guys figure out the basics and that's something called the 70-30 rule and I've said this before I'm not really sure who came up with this it wasn't me but I can't find any other information on it really basically it goes like this and we're in the perfect place because I can explain it to you on the sand right here if you're shooting your subject and say your subject was right here and you shooting the 70 30 means that if you were to divide up your scene into like a 180 degree rule like that which you guys should also be following and basically what it means is that once you're there if you're shooting from here for example this is your camera angle if you want to change shots to the second shot the 70 stands for 70 degrees of change in the circle and the 30 is 30 millimeters on your lens so basically why you want to kind of stick to this is because if you have two shots and you cut between them and there's those two shots are too similar to one another it's going to give a jump cut effect which you can use in certain scenarios but only if you want that effect to be happening if you're actually wanting to change angles in that scene having that 70 30 degree rule is going to make sure that those two angles are different enough from each other so that they'll cut together really well so like I mentioned you could move your camera angle 70 degrees any direction you want in the circle it could also be up or down like that otherwise your focal length your zoom range needs to be changed by 30 millimeters so if you're shooting on a 24 your next shot needs to be like over 50 millimeters at least if you want to cut between those so that's something super useful and a guide that once you guys kind of figure it out you will hold that with you for a very long time and continue to use it I know it's a little bit confusing but once you get the hang of it it makes a huge difference you can see Watson slowly getting more and more tired as we go through this video as we got here he's running around everywhere by the end of it he's gonna just be lying like completely asleep doing nothing already hey boy you tired <laughs> the next thing that you guys shouldn't be doing is using your shallowest depth of field all the time so I'm sure a lot of you are aware of getting that like bokeh or that blurred out background effect and maybe you get yourself a new lens it's got a super low f-stop and it's way too easy to just be super excited about it and shoot everything at like f1.2 now in a lot of scenarios this is really cool and you can use that f1.2 and you're going to get that beautiful soft background but it's not always the best idea if you have certain scenarios you sometimes want that deeper depth of field for example if there was two people or me and Watson in the frame and you wanted us both in focus you're gonna have to crank that f-stop to something much higher so that one of us isn't blurred out and the other one's in focus likewise if you are shooting at a landscape with a subject in it you don't necessarily want to completely blow out the landscape so that the person looking at it can still see a bit of that background and what's going on maybe you want to show that off and get both of them in focus so although it is nice to have don't use it all the time every time okay the next thing that I see people doing way too often is not having a solid plan or at least having a rough overview of what you want your finished video to look like the problem with just going out and shooting a bunch of stuff trying to maybe find it in the edit 
is that you don't know what you need for that video and you can end up just shooting a whole bunch of stuff you get super excited that looks cool this looks cool that looks cool you have so much footage that it's a nightmare to go through it all you spend a lot of time shooting all of that footage whereas if you have a nice little plan of how you want your video to be you can go to the place you're shooting you know exactly what you need you can get this shot get that shot when you get back to the edit you know how they're all going to kind of flow together where things are going to land up in your video and you can definitely still be spontaneous and creative capture different things things you see things that are going to look cool that you could have not planned for but at least you have that rough plan so you can kind of know what you need certain shots and you can fill in all the blanks while you're kind of out there and doing it so make sure you have a plan it doesn't have to be hectic if i go out and shoot something i might just write down a few bullet points if it's simple if it's something like this i need to do talking and i need to get b-roll i'll also just write down a couple of little points that i want to make sure i hit and not miss and then I'll write down a couple of little B-roll scenes that I want to get. I can get here, I can just get all the things that I need, know that I'm done, know that I have everything, and that's going to make a huge difference when you guys get back to the end. Do just what you want. <laughs> he put his whole hand under the wheel. He put his whole hand under to like hold his breath and find whatever you throw in. <laughs> the next tip is thinking that you have to shoot all of the b-roll that you're going to need to make your videos more interesting yourself. Watson, you're making a lot of noise back there dude. Why don't you come sit over here? So I'm sure you guys know that if you are shooting any talking head stuff, it makes sense that you can have appropriate B-roll over top of that footage to make sure that the audience is going to stay engaged, it's going to be interesting, it's going to be much more visually stimulating if there's cool shots of showing the thing you're talking about rather than just focusing on your head the whole time. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video which is Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an online stock media library with over a million different assets. So if you guys need stock footage or something, you can pretty much find a beautiful clip of like anything you could possibly need for your B-roll and you don't even need to head out and shoot it. They also have things like sound effects, motion graphics, and a bunch of other templates that you guys will find super useful to use in all of your content. If you guys wanna go check out Storyblocks, I'm gonna leave them linked in the top of the description. They are really an amazing platform for creators like you and I. So go and check them out. It's like an everyday thing. Watson gets so wet, he can literally like smell the water and he just guns it for water, soaks himself in the water and then tries to sit on all the seats in the car and tries to like climb on the furniture at home. Hey, hey, look at you, soaked. The last tip that I want to say to you guys is that I see people shooting in the wrong time of day. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of like golden hour, the best time to shoot when the sun is nice and low like now, but it doesn't mean it's the only time of day that you guys should be shooting. There's certain locations that will lend themselves better to different lighting scenarios. Maybe you are walking in a city and if it's more midday, you're going to get these cool shadows being cast and like these hard contrasting lights. Maybe you in a very dark overgrown forest and you don't want the sun to be too low because it's going to be too dark in the forest. You could rather have that sun a little bit higher. You can get some light rays coming through. Something that I find that happens to myself a lot is that if you're traveling somewhere or if you're in a place that you can't go back to shoot a lot, you can't sit around all day waiting to shoot that last little hour of day or the first hour of day in the morning. So you need to figure out ways to shoot different locations in different lighting scenarios and keep them really interesting. So look out for what location would work best in different specific lighting scenarios and plan strategically to go to those ones in those times. Okay. That is gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope that some of those tips were useful and I hope you at least didn't hear all of them. Some of them were hopefully new to you and I hope they're gonna help you. That's it for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.